Okay, autumn is here and Halloween approaches. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn some of these pumpkins into jack-o'-lanterns and I'm going to illuminate some of them with tea lights, candles, etc. Okay, I've cleared away most of the pumpkins and squashes. I've covered the table with newspapers. I've picked a few of the pumpkins that I'm gonna turn into jack-o'-lanterns. Okay, step one is to cut open the head of your jack-o'-lantern. Now you've also gotta be careful with this. And the larger pumpkins can have really quite thick, deep, fleshy skins. But at the end of the day, you want to cut a complete ring around your pumpkin. Now, as you can see by that angle, you want a good slope on here because the lid, you don't want to be able to fall through and inside into the pumpkin. And that really is the only tip you've got for this. Use a good knife, good stable knife. Really think the adult should do this bit because it's the hardest job you're just hacking through quite thick flesh so when i lift the lid off this i'll show you how thick it can be but i've seen pumpkins you know one to two inches thick where the walls are really really quite tough so let that up with this sharp knife and good angle 45 degree angle is always good all the way around and what you'll find is you can then rip that lid off and you can sit it back down again okay so i've now cut with my short strong knife this pumpkin and I should now be able to lift the lid up. Now the first time you do this, you're gonna hear some tearing. And there's quite a few things attached to the lid inside. And there we have all the lovely gunk. I'm gonna just put the lid aside. But what you can see here, I've got a really nice angle here, good 45 degrees. And there's no way when I pop this lid back on that it's gonna fall inside the pumpkin. So that's one lid done. And now the lovely mess of scraping out all these pumpkin seeds and all this thready gunk. And I'm going to throw everything into my washing up bowl or bucket. For this, put the lid down for a minute. I always find a long handled metal spoon ideal because you can really get in there and scrape. And when you scrape, you end up just with a great big pile of seed and this thready inside left at the end. Really quite clean walls. So I really recommend a good metal spoon to get into this. And what I also try to do whilst I'm scraping is I try to make the very bottom inside the pumpkin a little bit flatter. Now I do that so that I can then have a really kind of flat base on which to stand candles or as I'm going to try do in some of these pumpkins this year, I'm going to stand um, colourful light jars on the inside and I'm doing that to give a different colour and also to create a pumpkin that's safer so there's no flame or candles and therefore a lot more child friendly so maybe this can be a pumpkin that I can leave in a room with children unattended no risk of fire but it also means I can leave a pumpkin lighting the house from the windowsill in a bedroom upstairs so people from the street can see that we're supporting and celebrating Halloween but we don't need to then worry about the fact we've got a naked flame or a candle in an area where there's nobody actually in the room. So again, it's all about safety and fire, but still gives us a great same effect, the same twinkling light effect. Okay, so I'm gonna just tilt that a little bit. So as you can see, I've already whilst I've been talking, scraped clean nearly half this pumpkin. And in the very bottom here, I'm gonna tilt the camera. I've got a nice, oh, it's quite a heavy pumpkin. Nice pile of threads and seeds and slop and all the pumpkin brains that I'm gonna just scoop out and tip into my bowl, basin, sink, whichever you're using. So I'm gonna finish that and then get on to the next more fun stage, designing the face. Okay, this pumpkin's been hollowed out and I'm gonna just do the same scraping motion to the lid to get rid of these seeds and the thready bits. And it also gives me a chance to show you the color that you're looking for. To get rid of all these orange threads, you're literally going down to the white flesh. When you get to that point, you're a lot less likely to have all the fibrous material on exposed or on the show. Now the lid's really important to clean and get rid of these fibers because what you don't want is any of these red orange fibers, because they're quite long, you can see there, there's already about three, four, maybe even five inches. Because they swing and into, and if you are using candle, the candle flame, then you risk them setting fire. So really make sure you pay a lot of attention to the lid of your pumpkin to make sure it's really clean and that nothing fibrous will hang down from your lid. So as you can see, a lot of the orange stuff 
has been scraped away and we're getting down to a slightly paler orange flesh colour of the pumpkin body itself and that is a much safer surface okay so of course a good check a bit of a wipe the tissue make sure there's nothing loose because that's the whole point you don't want anything loose that when it's burning away inside of the candle that can come down and drop in front of the flame so we've got here a nice clean lid a nicely shaped pumpkin so it's easy to know which way the lid goes and give it a little wipe there some more gunk and already we've got one pumpkin ready to carve if only you could buy them like this thing Okay, I've decided with this pumpkin I'm going to use this dent and this really peculiar shape I've got here as part of its face. So I'm going to sort of roughly, roughly, two eyes there, this mashed up area can be his nose, and a kind of gawky jaw in here. So nothing too fancy. Now I'm doing a freeform face, so I've not drawn anything, not designed anything, not got any transfers because I'm pretty relaxed and happy with a traditional pumpkin face look on here. What I usually try to do is a non-symmetrical mouth because I find it an awful lot easier to cut. So if you try to make everything very, very symmetrical when it isn't, take the lid off, means I've got something better to grip on. When it isn't symmetrical, it doesn't show up so bad. So I'm going to just do some hacking into here. The classic V style of up and down. And sometimes you can get to turn your knife, depends if you're on a curved jag or a straight jag. I'm going for quite a mixture, so I'm going to do a curve down here, and I'm actually going to keep this curve echo going on because I'm going to go really quite high here. You've got to be careful with where your hands are and where the blade is. Now I'm going for quite a low, thin mouth, so I'm now going to go down from this point. So I've got here a very thin slice, and I'm going to cut a bit out in a minute. And when I get to where this sharp jag is, and I'm deliberately echoing it into where that's nice stripe and mess of the pumpkin that naturally occurs is. And again, I'm going to go up a bit, so a little bit toothy, a little bit vampire pumpkin y. There's two distinct tooth spikes going on here, but I'm not going to do as high on the right hand side here. I'm going to make maybe a few little nicks in here after I've cut the main jaw out as though he's got a slightly disfigured jaw, so he's got a much higher smile on here. So from the inside, I'm going to do a little bit of pushing. I'm just going to fall on the floor now. There's one big chunk. Let's obviously cut through completely clean. Let's just feel where that's stuck. It looks like it's in the middle there. There you go, there's a nice big bit. Now the bits you actually cut out for the mouths and eyes you could use for soups, because you've actually got some of the pumpkin flesh now, of course, you could use the seeds if you're really keen. You can uh, dry those pumpkin seeds, and they're, you know, I buy them all the time. They're really nice snacks. So again, I've got to just push out a bit more of the uh, jaw going on here. Be careful not to push too hard. If you haven't to push too hard, you probably not cut it right through. And I think I've done that again. So I just feel my way around with my knife. <laughs> so I find quite a short blade for the main cutting it works really well. Now, of course, this bit's going to go, so I can just cut through the shape to make it into smaller chunks. There's another bit of a mouth that's come out. And the final part, I'm going to just, again, to make sure this comes free, I'm going to give it a little bit of a push and try to find the areas again where it's sticking. And I think it's got a bit of a grip on the actual pumpkin around here still, so my curve wasn't so smart. Let's do that again. There we go, I can feel that was free, and out it comes. Now, so we've got here quite a non-symmetrical face. We've got a real high cut here on the right of the pumpkin, looking at the face of the pumpkin, and not so high on the left, so not symmetrical. A couple of good tooth, toothy grinny smiles in here. Needs a bit of tidying up in here. Again, I'll use the knife to do all of that. So I'm going to get a bit of a splashy squat nose in here, a couple of mean looking eyes, again I'm going to imbalance them so I'm going to have a slightly smaller eye over here, quite high, as though his face has been disfigured because it's been punched in this pumpkin, and a more regular, quite normal sized triangle eye over here. So let's do the little one first. I'm going to do the little one, point up, and I'm going to do the larger one, point down, you'll see what I mean by that. 
as I cut them. So there is quite a small eye. That little wedge has come out really well, that's a good cut. Now, again, always cut small, you can always make bigger. So there's my really little eye, it's though his face has been twisted around. And this side I can make it more regular. So I'm going to do point down, so I'm going to do the flat, the main flat part of the eye on the top. I'm going to dive down its cheek, maybe make that flat a little bit wider, almost going into the nose area. And I'll cut down to that corner as good as I can do. There we go, there's a more regular kind of uh, pumpkin eye. Now this one on the right inside of the pumpkin face is probably not big enough. So I'm going to uh, enlarge it because you're really not going to see it otherwise. So again, you can just cut small wedges out. I can decide to make it a little bit deeper and I can make it look any shape I want because this is the side that's been bashed. So I'm actually going to square that up a little bit and make it look a little bit sad as much as scary. Aren't all pumpkins a little bit sad and scary though? Okay, so we've now got here a dented offset twisted eye on the same side of his mouth. More regular looking pumpkin. I'm going to do quite a big nose here. And I'm going to just do two long slits. Two narrow slits if I can cut it narrow. It's a little bit tough to build the pumpkin where the skin has uh, obviously grown with some scoring. Quite natural. I love the fact pumpkins are all very different. I usually go and look for the big ugly ones. I think they're already so full of character. Okay, so we've got here two large, but quite narrow, slitted nose slots going on here. And I'm just want to dive that in there a little bit. Should be able to get this side out now. There we go, there goes one and the other side and then what you're going to do is look at it and go do I need to have bigger eyes do I need to make the nose bigger and you can tweak it a little bit this is free form face so it's not being designed or measured and what do I think I think it might need a little bit of work I think it's got quite a, an animal feel to it now I've cut this it's got a bit of a, a wild dog kind of feel to it it's really quite a big nose so I'm now going to use my knife and tidy up and cut out all these little bits that you can see inside these holes so that it's really much clearer, cleaner. It doesn't take too long, the main shape's there. I'm not going to do too, much, too many tweaks, but I am going to tidy it up. And then quite quickly, this one's ready for a candle. Okay, here's my first jack-o'-lantern. I'm going to turn the lights off just so you can get to see what it looks like in the dark. Now, because my camera's not very good in the dark, what I'm going to do, there we go, if I cover most of the light, it re-meters on the actual orange glow of the pumpkin, and you can see more of the details. And what you can see I've done around the top of the jack-o'-lantern's head here, where the lid would come off, let me just quickly lift it off so you can see what I mean, is I've scored with a little tool that's got um, about a four or five millimeter point which could equally have been a pencil where the lead will have been perhaps snapped off or sharpened to a, a dull point. And by scoring into the pumpkin skin, I'm just going to do a couple of lines here so you can see what I mean. You actually add really quite nice lines. So you're not cutting all the way through the pumpkin. So the kids can do this quite safely because they haven't got a knife. But they're scoring. Again, I've got to make the camera, force the camera to see those lines. So what I've done is I've scored extra lines here around the ring around the ring of the actual cut where the hat is as it were of the jack-o'-lantern and it really gives quite a nice neat glow where the lights are going through this I'm just going to bring the lights back up and I'm going to quickly show the tool in the daylight it happens to be orange so I'm going to just put my palm in the way but literally all you've got there is a very small pointy prod and all I was doing was scoring down through the skin into the flesh of the pumpkin across the main cut that I made earlier and that creates that quite nice effect around the ring. You can only really see it when it's dark and the glowing light goes through the skin. Um, also you can't see it as visible as you can with the face during the daytime and when the days when the room's lit but it's a really neat effect when it's dark.